In this tutorial, we will understand about the six steps to a cybersecurity risk assessment. So the first step is to characterize the system, process, function or application. Characterizing the system will help you determine the viable threats. This should include, among other factors, 1. What is it? 2. What kind of data does it use? 3. Who is the vendor? 4. What are the internal and external interfaces that may be present? 5. Who uses the system? 6. What is the data flow? 7. Where does the information go? The second step is to identify threats. There are some basic threats that are going to be in every risk assessment. However, depending on the system, additional threats could be included. Common threat types include 1. Unauthorized access malicious or accidental. This could be from a direct hacking attack, compromise, malware infection, or internal threat. 2. Misuse of information or privilege by an authorized user. This could be the result of an unapproved use of data or changes made without approval. 3. Data leakage or unintentional exposure of information. This includes permitting the use of unencrypted USB and or CD-ROM without restrictions. Deficient paper retention and destruction practices. Transmitting non-public personal information, NPPI, over unsecure channels or accidentally sending sensitive information to the wrong recipient. 4. Loss of data. This can be the result of poor replication and backup processes. 5. Distribution to service or productivity. Third step is to determine inherent risk and impact. This step is done without considering your control environment factoring in how you characterize the system. You determine the impact to your organization if the threat was exercised. Examples of impact ratings are high impact could be substantial. Medium impact would be damaging but recoverable and or inconvenient. Low impact would be minimal or non-existent. Fourth step is to analyze the control environment. You typically need to look at several categories of information to adequately assess your control environment. Ultimately, you want to identify threat prevention, mitigation, detection, or compensation controls and the relationship to identified threats. A few examples include organizational risk management controls, user provisioning controls, administration controls, user authentication controls, infrastructure data protection controls, data center physical and environmental security controls, continuity of operations controls, Control assessment categories may be defined as Satisfactory Meets control objective criteria, policy or regularity requirements Satisfactory with recommendations Meets control objective criteria, policy or regularity requirements with observations for additional enhancements to existing policies procedures or documentation needs improvement partially meets control objective criteria policy or regularity requirements inadequate 
does not meet control object criteria, policy, or regularity requirement. Fifth step is to determine a likelihood rating. Now you need to determine the likelihood of the given exploit taking into account the control environment that your organization has in place. Examples of likelihood ratings are high the threat source is highly motivated and sufficiently capable and controls to prevent the vulnerability from being exercised are ineffective. Medium the threat source is motivated and capable but controls are in place that may impede successful exercise of the vulnerability. Low the threat source lacks motivation or capability or controls are in place to prevent or at least significantly impede the vulnerability from being exercised. And sixth step is to calculate your risk rating. Even though there is a ton of information and work that goes into determining your risk rating, it all comes down to a simple equation. Impact, if exploited, multiply by likelihood of exploit in the assist control environment equals risk rating. Some examples of risk ratings are Severe, a significant and urgent threat to the organization exists and risk reduction, remediation should be immediate. Elevated, a viable threat to the organization exists and risk reduction, remediation should be completed in a reasonable period of time. Low, threats are normal and generally acceptable but may still have some impact to the organization. Implementing additional security enhancements may provide further defense against potential or currently unforeseen threats. Regular risk assessments are a fundamental part of any risk management process because they help you arrive at an acceptable level of risk while drawing attention to any required control measures. The risk assessment process is continual and should be reviewed regularly to ensure your findings are still relevant. Risk rating can be calculated as impact multiply likelihood, impact divided by likelihood, severity multiply value, severity multiply impact. Regular risk assessments are a fundamental part of any risk management process because they help you arrive at an acceptable level of risk while drawing attention to any required control measures. This statement is true or false. Write down your answer in the comment section. We will share the answer once we receive 10 answer comments.